All right, Ryan Wheeler. How are you doing? How are you? I'm good. I'm very good. I'm very good as well. Good to be here. Great to be in your boxing ring here at the um, the train station gym, which is unfortunately going to be no more soon. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that later. Yeah. But I wanted to I wanted to speak to you about how you got into boxing because for years now. I've seen you on social media. Your social media game, your PR game is really on point. Um, how did you get into it and when did you start to really take it seriously as, you know, I'm, I'm putting myself out there as a boxer. This is who I am. This is what I do. It's a bit of a funny story, actually. So um, I started boxing. So I lived in, I lived in Froome. Um, my dad moved to Leicester. Um, we used to go visit school holidays and stuff like that. Eventually, I decided I wanted to live there. So when I was maybe 12 years old. I moved to Leicester, went to school in Leicester. I wouldn't say I got bullied, but living, living in Leicester with a Somerset accent doesn't go that great. Right. Um, a few guys kind of took the mick up the accent a little bit like that. And I used to fight quite a lot at school. And I had a fight with this one kid. I wasn't very good at fighting then. I was about, you know, this tall. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, I had a fight with this one kid and he absolutely battered me. And after the fight, we were both sat outside the head teacher's office. And I said, how are you so good at fighting? He said, I do boxing. And I was like, I want to do that. Right. And we kind of shook hands and become good friends. We're still friends now. Um, seen him last year. We come to Cardiff, actually. Went to Cardiff for the weekend together. Um, and yeah, just started boxing. And my, my dream was always to be better than him. <laughs> I kept thinking, I just want to be better than him. Be better than him. He's been doing it for like two years. I'm right. two years behind, but I'm going to do this. Right. Um, and eventually that day happened, we, we were sparring, and I was a little bit better than him. I carried on fighting. Um, he actually went on to give up. I think he had maybe three or four fights and gave up. And I just carried on, you know, throughout my teenage years. Um, whilst I was at school, I always wanted to join the army. Um, a few people already know about this, but I actually had bone cancer when I was younger. Oh. Um, so I didn't get into the army because of that reason. So I kind of, I was working in Asda, doing a little bit of boxing, just as, just as fun. I didn't really take it too serious. I used to train like maybe twice a week, do the occasional run and just enjoy it. Um, I'd done pretty well as an amateur. I w uh, reached the national finals and stuff like that. Um, and I didn't get into the army, so I thought, right, I need plan B. What do I do now? Started doing this here, the personal training, teaching kids how to box, adults how to box. Um, was offered to turn professional. And I thought, you know, I looked at people like Floyd Mayweather and thought, how can I do that, what they're doing, you know? Yeah. But obviously, there's different levels to professional boxing. I started off, went in for my first fight. wasn't too great on my first fight. I got a draw, um, but then after that, my second fight got a win, and it's just completely changed my life. I think. It, so, if you had done that first fight and you'd lost, do you think that would have that would have been it? As a professional, or as in, mean, as, I mean, more for you mentally. Do you think if you uh, if you hadn't had a draw, because you in your head you can reconcile that? No, I don't you think didn't so. Do too badly then. I don't think so because. My first ever boxing match, I was maybe 13 years. It was actually 15 years ago in November, November the 3rd. I got it come up on my Facebook. It was 15 years ago. Um, and I look exactly the same in the picture. Still the same baby face, just maybe a, a few inches taller. Um, <laughs> and I, I lost my first amateur fight. And it actually drove me to do it again. I okay. think if I won my first amateur fight, I didn't really take it too seriously as a kid. I probably would have thought, oh, that's great. I want like, to, to finish now. Um, and then after my first one, I thought, I can't finish on a loss, you know. Then I won my second fight, and it was the best feeling in the world. So I had a rematch with a kid from the first fight, and lost again. Okay. And then I, had, I won my fourth fight, won my fifth fight. I had a rematch with him again and beat him the third time. And I was like, this is great. And I just carried on ever since from there. Just carried on beating. Yeah, yeah. So, so I had, <laughs> I've had, I think I had 55 amateur fights before I turned professional. I've now had 18 professional fights. So. Amazing. So it's... it's a Tell me, how, I mean, how do you become professional? Is there, is there a certain, certain level of, uh, is there a certain amount of amateur fights under certain um, organisations that put them on that you have to win? or what's It's recently the... changed. Uh, you never used to have to do that. Um, I did, I, obviously I did do that, but um, you used to just be a certain professional if they thought you were good enough. You'd have to go do like a, a boxing training session in front of someone and they tell you if you're good enough or not. Right. But now you do have to have the amateur experience. Um, how much, I'm not sure. Um, and you just find like a manager who's willing to sign you. That's obviously the hardest part if you're no good um, and you can't bring them anything, they're not going to want to sign you. Right. 
um, and you just get to go from there, really. Where's that income come from then? So when you say you turn <coughs> professional, yep. I think in my head, and I think probably a lot of people, because I don't know that much about boxing or the world of boxing, hence why we're, we're chatting, but do you, do you get like a, a wage from that? Or you, is it then sponsorships? Or is it then just, it's purses, isn't it, when you fight? I rely a lot on, on sponsorship, basically. So the sponsorship kind of covers my, I mean, I train in Swindon, so I drive into Swindon two, three times a week. Um, you know, even just like you, you diet in and every, all the equipment and stuff you need, it's not cheap. You get paid for a fight, it's usually around about a thousand pounds, something like that. It sounds great for you, you know, you're fighting for four round fight, what's that, three, six, 12 minutes. Yeah. Sounds great. But obviously, you're training for a fight for maybe three months. Yeah. A thousand pounds is not, it is not three months' wages. No. Um, so people like at my level are still working as well. Um, takes up a majority, you know, majority of your day when you're at work. And to train like a professional, if you want to mix with these top, top guys who are, you know, been to the Olympics and stuff like that, they're not working. They're training three times a day, yeah. five, six, seven days a week, you know. Um, so that's where it becomes difficult in the professional boxing. Right. Um, how, how do you break away from that where you can say, oh, okay, say you're still working at Asda or whatever, you know, some pros' day jobs are. At what point can you go... Okay, I've got to quit that now. Yeah. So what? What? Where is that next level? How do you reach that? And what happens is you just kind obviously just it's more the, money, isn't it? But yeah, yeah. Just getting the breakthrough. I mean, sponsorship <clears throat> support is massive. Um, but just getting the breakthrough, the right fights at the right time. You could beat someone, boost up your rankings, and then next minute a British title fight or something comes in on a TV show. That's when the money starts coming involved. When you know going on TV and stuff like that. Um, unfortunately, around here we don't really have anywhere. Well, there's big arenas, so round even like Bristol, the, the shows aren't that big over in Wales. I think Bournemouth do one at the O2, which can, can be all right, um, but there's just nothing around here. If you're in London or you're in in the Midlands, all these big event, uh, big venues they put on big events, so it's, it's a lot easier to get onto these shows. But that being said, there's also probably ten times the amount of professional boxers around that area. Right. Um, so yeah, it just just again what we're going to talk about talk about shortly. My next fight. Um, you get a big breakthrough like that, then obviously that's when the money can suddenly start jumping up. And a bit of travel as well. A bit of travel as well, So yeah. wh wh where where has boxing taken you? I'm assuming it's taken you around the UK. Yes, like... I've been all over the UK. You know, it's Liverpool, so all over the place really. Obviously when I was boxing in Leicester, around Leicester. Um, all over, down in London. Um, but the next fight I've got coming up is a big one. I'm going over to Kazakhstan, obviously just down from Russia. Um, just down the road from Russia. Just down the road from Russia. There you go. Like, literally, just spin distance. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that'll be my biggest, biggest fight to date. Um, it's going to be for the European title, WBA European title. Stop you there. How many European titles are there in boxing? Do you know what? Don't ask me. There's, is there's, there a lot? There's, there's, there seems to be lots of everything in boxing these days. Yeah. Right. So is it? So is it's the European like because when someone says WBO oh, is, is it he's the one, heavyweight yeah. champion of yeah, the world, Tyson Fury, there's a heavyweight champion somewhere else, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where's what's the, is this just the promotions? Is it? Is um, it it's, it's basically there's loads of uh, found not foundations from the other one. What the word that I'm looking for? Federation. But federation. That's the word I'm looking for. There you go. You got me. Um, so like you got like the WBO, the IBO, the IBF. You got the WBC. There's just so many. And again, I guess it's all just ways of people making money out of boxing. I guess that's from. Um, but the WBO, I'm happy to say, is is one of the big ones. Um, so yeah, I'm like saying this is the big the big belt. It's not going to be a small belt. It's you know it's the big one. Okay. And what what weight class are you in? This weight class is going back to my old uh, my old weight, which is super featherweight. Super, right. Nine stone four for those who don't know that. So, okay, uh, it's a little bit ridiculous, but um, I boxed at that back before COVID, yeah. over COVID, and that like we all did. I put on some weight. Yeah. Um, didn't really train too much. Got into running and stuff again. Got into the weights a little bit. Um, we weighing at about eleven stone. Um, got my weight back down to about ten and a half. So I found out about this fight not yesterday, Friday before. I weighed myself. I was ten stone six. The right. fight, the fight's in four weeks. And they said, right, can you do it? And on, so that was last Friday. On Wednesday this week, I was nine stone 10. So I've done that 10 pounds. I've just been on it. And, and how, right, so how are you shedding that weight in a healthy way? Or have you, or have you because of time constraints, had to be slightly 
reckless with uh slightly i mean because i'm obviously training a lot i have to still eat you know people are, you surely you're not eating i'm obviously i'm not eating as much as i'd like to eat yeah um but i'm still making sure to eat i mean i'm still training every day i'm still have the ability to get up every morning and, and run um so and I, I feel fine at the moment i spied yesterday uh, over in swindon a guy who was i think he's ranked third in the world uh number one in europe um an undefeated professional boxer big cheese and, and yeah the big guy and uh spot fine we've done six rounds um i stayed in for another two afterwards with another guy so yeah i, I felt good um and if i'm handling myself with them sort of people i, I definitely <coughs> feel ready for this fight in a few S weeks number one in the world mm. uh, and sorry number, Europe. number three number one in europe he's ranked it yeah okay so I'm trying to understand this now. So, so guys like Mike Tyson, Mayweather, Fury, where are they in the rankings? Are this different rankings? What, what are we, are we no, talking no, about? No, like, yeah. They, they, so this guy was ranked as an amateur. So this is amateur rankings I was talking about there. Okay, right. So um, he's gone for like world championships and like European championships and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and he, he's recently turned. Well, I say recently. I think he's been pro a little while now, just before COVID. Um, he's had three fights as a professional, one or three fights. So uh, yeah, he's looking for. a for a big, big career in boxing now. Okay, amazing. And when you've had a, a run like that of like three wins in a row, yes. do you, you don't, I guess at some point you don't just take all comers, do you? You have to, do you start, do, do people like that hold out for a better fight? Yeah. Think, no, so, I'm not going to do that I mean, every professional is the same. You know, that you, you got, I guess, professional boxing is so different to, to amateur boxing. Right. So, um, you have to, you have a few warm up fights, get yourself into it, get used to the longer rounds, um, the more rounds, um, different sort of tactics in professional boxing. Um, it's not so much that different anymore. So when I was amateur boxing, it was more point scored, your head guards, things like that. Now as seniors, they take head guards off, um, which I'm not sure if I agree with when it comes to the tournaments like the Olympics. Right. Obviously, people are getting cut and they're having to forfeit the tournament because of cuts and stuff like that. Right. Whereas that didn't tend to happen with the, with the head guards before. It does still happen sometimes, but not not as likely. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just the difference between the professional and the amateur boxing now isn't isn't nowhere near as big as it used to be. I don't think. Right, that's interesting as well because that you know, like you said, you weren't sure about whether the head they should have the head guards on and off. That brings in another conversation, doesn't it, around you know health and you know, there's a lot of guys. You look at these old school boxers who were back in the day and they're all like suffering with things like Parkinson's or yeah. dementia or things like that. Like how seriously do you or does does boxing in general take that that sort of like legacy? Because clearly these guys, it's like the old football guys that, that, that they're getting issues now because they spent their life headering really um really heavy old school footballs and they in the in the um the science wasn't there, the evidence wasn't yeah. there. So how, how how is boxing reacting to things where you're starting to see all the old pros now? Well, what I probably want to go back on what I said there is obviously when I said about uh, not having head guards, I don't agree with it. As a professional, I think that's, that's part of it. Right. Um, and as a professional, there are these competitions now where people are boxing more than, you know, I think there was a show on recently and I think they boxed three times in, three, in, in maybe three days. It might may have been two days. Right. Um, even a day, it could have even been on the same night. I might, might be on the same night. But isn't it with the Olympics? You're obviously fighting the best in the world, yeah. all over the world. Um, it's a tournament over however many weeks, whatever, how many days. Um, and the chances of, like, say, getting a cut in, in one of these fights when they're just three round fights, real fast paced, yeah. um, is quite high. Um, and, you know, you see some of these boxers who are probably quite likely to win it. Yeah. But then they fight someone who roughs them up a little bit, gets a little bit dirty inside. Yeah, and they get a cut, and that they can't continue with the competition. Right. So I feel like with the Olympics, it's probably not the right decision to do. Right. Um, but as a pro, you know, I'm fighting sort of every three, four months, something like that. Plenty of time in between to sort of heal yourself up, give yourself some rest, get back into it. Um, I do feel like there's a a lot more safety measures in place now with professional boxers. I mean, every year I have to have a brain scan, um, MRI really? scan. Yeah, I have to see you have to see a doctor at every start of the season. Uh, to renew your license and you have to have the uh, MRI scan just to make sure everything's okay. 
Um, you're allowed to have two changes on your MRI scan. I've never had. I've been doing it what since 2014 now. I've never had one. And when they say changes, what do you mean? Two, um, two. So they look at your old one and they think, go, yeah, "There's some there's scarring." Some, yeah, something like that. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Right. If, if, if basically, if you don't hear anything, it's good news. There's nothing, nothing going on. Right. If you hear something, it's bad news. I've always said, if I even had one, I mean, you shouldn't mess around with your brain. You know, yeah. that would be me done. Um, okay. See, I've never, I've never had anything since I'm doing since 2014. Um, so you know. I say I've been lucky. Maybe I just don't get hit too much. But uh, yeah, I, I feel like in this day and age, there's a lot more care and health in boxers. You know, as soon as you finish the fight, you see a doctor. You see a doctor before the fight. Um, and I feel like people are just a lot more clued up on it these days. And also, back then, a lot of the boxers used to go on a lot longer than what they do now. Right. I feel like the kind of people getting there now, they earn fairly decent money when they're at the top game, and they kind of just get out and, and go into something else now. Whereas before now, some of the guys, Muhammad Ali, for example, probably went on way too long. Yeah. Um, and he's not the only one. There's a number of them who, who kind of just take too many fights that they don't really need. Yeah. You know? And, and I, I get, this might be an ignorant thing to say, but I, I think there's possibly a lot of people out there that would think that, oh, well, if they're good, then they're not getting, you know, they don't have to worry because they shouldn't be getting punched as much. But it's just... It's when you're inevitable, been, isn't it? Exactly. When you're in there, that you know, someone the same level as you, yeah. at the end of the day, you're always going to get hit a little bit. Yeah. You know, and it's not just the fight. That's the, the people don't see the what happens, but back, you know, behind the scenes. Yeah, I mean, you've got a shiner I mean, now, okay, and go, you're only but, training. Yeah, there you right? go. There you go. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there is, you know, sometimes the sparring can be just as hard as some of the fights I've had. Hundred percent. Sometimes harder. You know, sometimes you you travel to other gyms and you you purposely put yourself in the ring with someone. For example, yesterday, yeah, you know, ranked third in Europe because you want the toughest spine you can get. So when it comes to the fight, it doesn't feel like there's much of a jump, if any. Right. Yeah. So you don't just get your bell you run just, immediately. You know, don't get me wrong. Sometimes you need some easier rounds just to get your confidence up and stuff like that. Mm. But the last thing you want to do is get in that ring and think you're something you're not, and then get your ass handed you on a plate. You know. Yeah. That is interesting. Yeah, that's interesting because you. Yeah, I guess you have to go hard in training because you, you're you're simulate. You, you know, you're not. You don't want to simulate the fight. You need yeah. to be. You know, so if he hits you with some right hard right hook or something or an uppercut, it, you needs needs to be like, oh, that's familiar. Yeah, that doesn't it. feel like. And and you I've don't. I've been here before. I've been here before, and not panic as well. Yeah, I guess that's the thing. Um, there is a, that expression I, I heard uh, a little while back is, you know, some some men have never been punched in the face and you can tell. Some people have the opinion that some, you know, every every bloke <laughs> needs to get punched in the face at least <laughs> once in their life because it's a humbler, isn't it? It is. It um, is. I mean, I've been punched, I've punched people and um, and it's a humbler, isn't it? You know, sometimes you just get a bit out of line and you, and you catch... You catch one, it's a nice little reset sometimes, <laughs> isn't it? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's 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 really interesting. That is super interesting that you guys go super hard in the training. Um, I hadn't even really thought about it because when you see it in the films and you see it in documentaries, it looks like everyone's guarded up, they've got the body stuff on, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and it all looks quite like muscle memory stuff. Yeah. But yeah, that, I can see from that shiner that... Um, yeah. yeah, but you handled yourself last night, right? Yeah, no, it was really good, actually. Uh, do you know what? I left the gym last night with a massive smile on my face. Honestly, all day I was thinking, I've hardly ate anything this week. I actually felt fine, but I've not ate much this week. This guy's meant to be something special, which he was, to be fair to me, he was very good. Um, and I thought, I've not had sparring like this for, for a long time. You know, the level of sparring I'm, I'm going up to now. Um, it's going to be interesting. But sometimes, the, the, I say nerves, I wasn't nervous. I was just expecting, you know, the worst to happen. Mm. And I, it maybe brought up my end game, you know. I thought I really had to rise to it yesterday. Yeah. And we, uh, we went off after the training session. I spoke to my trainer. He was chuffed. I was happy. I mean, yeah, that was all right. That was good. And what do you think about, um, obviously, like, like, like what we're talking about here, you dedicate your life to boxing. Yeah. And you dedicate... You're, you know, you put your body on the line and everything and you do this stuff. How do you feel when you, like, at the moment, we're in a bit of a culture of celebrity boxing matches, aren't we? Yeah. And I think that Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor one yeah. was the, the catalyst the for all of that, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I, I agree. I definitely, I sort of paid more attention after that. What do you think of the, is it Jake Paul? Is yeah. it Jake Paul or Jake the other one? Jake and Logan, one of them, yeah. I don't know which, I think Jake's fighting Tommy, isn't he? 
Tommy, Tommy Fury. Fury. Yeah. Right. Um, and I'm starting to see guys, big guys now, like Martin Ford. Do you know, you know you've heard of Martin Ford? Yeah. Um, he's doing a boxing match now. And there's all this sort of like, I think it's like fake beef, isn't it? So yeah. there's a lot of, it's almost like straddling that line Sell of like fight. WWE Sell stuff. Fight. Exactly that, yeah, yeah. Well, how do you, do you do, have you done stuff like that where you get on Instagram live and you go, oh, I've heard that he's, he doesn't train as hard and oh, and have you seen this and that and let's have a look at that and you start dirty talking. I'm, per I'm purposely not, uh, I'm, I'm not into that, if I'm honest, but... Uh... I mean, it is, it, I find it quite entertaining to watch sometimes, a little bit, you know. Um, but it's funny because you know for a fact they're getting there, they're going to punch the crap out of each other for half an hour or whatever. They're going to get paid. And then they're going to pay yeah, loads more money because they've had a little bit of beef. And I get that. That's what it's all about. And maybe sometimes some fights, they do really hate each other at the start. But when you've been in the ring, you can't help but respect that man at the end of the round, especially he's lasted 10, 12 rounds of you. Yeah. You know, and you know what he's put him, himself through for the last three, four months training for the fight. Sometimes longer than that. And you just think, do you know what? Like we both put ourselves through this, and you, you see these boxes like they hate each other before the fight, and at the end they want to cuddle and kiss each other and get beers together. You know? so, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting. I do, it's just interesting to see what you think about about all that stuff in terms of like, is that good for the sport, yes, or is it cheapening yes no. stuff slightly? It's, it's, it's quite hard for me in the way I look at it. As in, I mean, I've done this for fifteen years now, and yeah. I've boxed in these crappy little halls, um, you know trying to think of a you know football clubs and in places like that you know and yeah, you paid your dues with, yeah that's it and they haven't had to and do that I've just, I've just always wanted to you know do a tv show or just i'm not even bothered about tv i'd like to get you know under the lights the big lights or imagine you know saying you boxed at wembley stadium or something yeah. like that you know be amazing and these guys are just walk into big, it really. you know yeah, yeah yeah but and then with that being said you know at the end of the day um you know, they sell themselves well. They, you know, money talks in boxing, money talks in all sports, you know. Um, and the way I look at it now for, a, a, you know, my day job, I do personal training here. I do uh, classes here. And when these big fights happen, all these kids and follow these YouTubers and stuff like that. Oh, I'm going to have a look, look, look at boxing. Where can I go boxing? They type in on Facebook for yeah. boxing and they're here training. So it's, it's good in a business sense for that. Um, and it's just going to make boxing bigger. So yeah. in the long run, it's going to be good for me as, as a sport, the sport I love, you know. It's good for business. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I like that. Yeah, I just yeah, I was just wondering if it maybe it was like... It's just the unfairness, I think. You know, like I say, yeah. I've, I've spent my whole life doing this and I've not had a chance or an opportunity yeah. to do something like that yet. And, and, and maybe they've mouthed you... off for a few years and that, now look at them. Right. You know? And they've got how many subs on it YouTube. Is what it is. You know, a lot of people say the same, the similar question. They talk about the Eubanks. Uh, you know, Chris Eubank, senior. Then he brings his son along. And because it's his son, he's straight on the big platform. Nepotism. And I get it's frustrating. But at the same time, if your son was a boxer and you were, uh, or a footballer, and like, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo, and you had the connections to make, you know, make his career. But of course you're going to do that. Yeah. Your son. And that's yeah. exactly what he's done. He's done everything he could to make his son. And he's good though, today. isn't he? And yeah, yeah, he's good. Yeah, I've heard yeah. good things about yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he trains hard. He works hard. You, you can't fault what he's done. You really can't. Right. Because he would be found out pretty quick, wouldn't he? Yeah. If he if he got in the you know had a match booked off the back of him being. I'm, do you know what? I, I'm not his biggest fan. I'm not going to sit here and say he's the best boxer I've ever seen. Um, but you know he works hard. He's strong and he's tough, and you, you can't take that away from him. Um, yeah, at the same time, I still think there's there's better boxes out there. Okay. So yeah, it must be frustrating. It must be frustrating. And we, we, I've seen stuff like that in the music industry as well. Is, you know, like I've done the same. You play community spaces and youth clubs and town halls and yep. little venues and this and that. And you bust your ass. And you go and you go and you dedicate, you dedicate, and you dedicate. And then someone's, uh, some Hollywood actor has a son and they release a song and, and it's just like... yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There's your career. And it's that's like, it. did did you even, you didn't try. No, like, that's, you didn't yeah, that's, go. that's how it works, isn't it? Okay. So let's talk a little bit about your your work here because in Froome, you're, uh, and I'm going to I'm gonna gas you up a bit, you're sort of like a, a local hero. In, <laughs> you know, to a lot, there's loads of kids that, that come here and train with you. You're a role model for them. They look up to you, and you were saying before we before we started filming that you've seen pictures of them recently. That when they joined you, and how much they've grown, 
you know and and obviously it's probably something when you're so focused on 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 your your per, your boxing yourself that you don't always have the time to reflect and think back on it but you are an important figure in a lot of a lot of the youth in this area's lives and they look to you so how do you how do you feel about that it's like a, it's an honor isn't it um, it is yeah um and do you know what i've probably taken it for not for granted but i mean i've just not, not it's just what i do you know i come here like no, you know, I speak to everyone the same. I treat everyone the same. No one gets special treatment here. No matter how good you are, no matter how bad you are, you come in, you do your skipping. If you're talking, I'm talking. You're doing press ups and stuff like that. You know, it's very discipline. Yeah, very discipline. Yeah, you know, there's, there's there's boys who come here and do more one to one training than me than others. There's boys who come here one week and they don't come the next week. I think that we're just here to. I'm, I'll try and keep it fun as well as we're here to work hard. Um, and if I can influence them to do something better with their life, keep them fit as well, then great. You know, some of the guys now have gone on and wanted to be professional boxers. Some guys go on and want to be personal trainers. Um, and yeah, you know, if they have influenced that in any way, then great. Have you ever had a sparring <laughs> match with, with one of your students and and you've had to keep face? But then you when they've what? gone I've, I've home, got, you've I've gone... Got, oh <laughs> I've, got a great, I've got two great, great stories about that, actually. So I've got one... I'll tell you one, a, a funny one actually first. A guy called Lee, um, he won't mind me mentioning this. His son, so Lee must be about 38 or something like that. I hope he's not younger than that because I'm going to sound like a right dick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he must be, like, his son's 14. Um, and his, he said, Dad, Dad, I've seen this boxing thing in the room. Can we go? Can we go? And his dad lives in Salisbury. So his dad sort of said, All right, we'll look at it. And his dad's done a bit, little bit of boxing before. So anyway, his dad's gone, drove from Salisbury to Warminster to pick his son up. And he's, showed him a picture of me, baby faced me. And he said, well, that boy there is teaching us how to box. And he says, yeah, yeah, dad, he's really good. He's really good. And he was like, all right, I'll take him along. And he said, I turned up around. He said, I looked you up and down. He said, I almost laughed, but I thought, that's fine. I stuck along with it. We had a good first session. He said, I'll try it one more time. We come back for the second session. And I said to you, can we do some sparring? You sparred me. He said, you beat me around that ring. He said, I walked here. I said, I had so much respect for you after that. <laughs> it's, not, it's not what you look like, you know what I mean, in boxing. Um, so that's one, one kind of cool story. And we're good friends now. You know, he's, he, I spoke to him today on the phone. Um, he's also trying to help me try and find a new gym and stuff like that. Um, another story similar to that. So we've got a young lad. He won't mind me mentioning his name, Frankie Milsom. He's now, I think, 17. That's a boxing name, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. There we Frankie go. Frankie Milsom. Yeah, that's it. Um, <laughs> Very, very talented boxer. Very good. Uh, we've got two lads. Very similar, actually. Uh, another one, Charlie Brixey. He's slightly younger. Another boxer name. Uh, no, no, definitely. These are yeah. hard nut names. There you go. Um, so I, I've taught both of them. I've actually got a video on my phone of Charlie when he was maybe nine, eight or nine. And he's just over here. He does some shallow boxing, moving around. and He's all over the place. His feet are all over the place. Frankie's the same. I've got videos and pictures of him when he was a little, little baby. And then like, they get in the ring with me now and you just think, oh, it's, it's only young Frankie, it's only Charlie. You sort of put your hands up, you walk towards them, you kind of walk them down next and it, bang, you get punched in the face and you think, God, they're 16, 17 now, they're not little kids anymore, you know? And it, you're like, okay, get your hands up and, and sort of move around. Um, yeah. You know, especially Frankie, you know, this, it's, nice, it's a nice feeling though, you know, they, if it wasn't for me, they wouldn't do that. I mean, maybe they would have done it somewhere else, I can't say for, say for sure, but it's but, because but of something you, I've you, done. You've done it. Is yeah. what they, you know, and they just, yeah, they're real nice people as well. And I guess that they're all, like, when you do a fight, they're all behind you. Yeah, they usually come along, actually, and, and support me. Yeah, it's great. So when you step into, the, psychologically, when you step into the ring to do a professional match or a competition, something with, with reputational stakes, yep. do you, are you, you're, do, you're doing it for you, aren't you? But you, you yeah. also, I guess there's probably a part of you that's like, well, you've got to show up for them. Yes, definitely. Because they're going to be watching everything. Wrong. Even that, so I've had around 70 fights in total, I'm just over that maybe. So I've done seven, uh, sorry, 55 amateur fights, I've done maybe five unlicensed white colour fights. What um, does that mean? That sounds a bit like... It's basically... Bare knuckle, like... It's not bare knuckle or anything like that. It's dungeon boxing. You don't need license, like anyone can do it, basically. Like, <laughs> right. I, could, I could sign you up to do it now, do you know what I mean? Like, okay. It's a bit like that. Um, it's a bit naughty, really. It's a bit, it can be a bit dangerous if it's not done safely, you know, right. like... You've, I've been to these events before and there's, you know, there's 16 stone men fighting nine stone boys, do you know what I mean? It's, it's crazy. Um, yeah, so I've done five of these fights um, and that's just before I turned professional. It was just going to get me used to the selling the tickets and stuff like that because you haven't got to do that as an amateur. Right. But in white collar and pro, you have to do that. So it kind of got me used to it before, before I went to into professional boxing. Every fight I've had, I've never taken less than 100 people. I mean, it's crazy to think I, I, I've never, I've boxed in through twice now. But 
I've been to Bristol, I've been to Swindon, you know, as a professional. And there's always, I've always sold 100 tickets over, over that. And I think that's 100 people who pay maybe a minimum of £40 for a ticket, sometimes as much as £80 for a ticket. Then they finish work on a Friday or, or the, on a Saturday, they give up their weekend, they make their way to Bristol. Um, obviously, that's not cheap, especially if they're drinking, they have to get taxis or whatever. Or, you know, we sometimes put a coach on. And, you know, that's 100 plus people come there to support me, something I do. Um, even after 70 fights, I, I, sometimes I'm behind the curtain, but the ring music's playing. And I'm thinking, oh, if I just hide, maybe they'll forget. And when I, you know, I get so nervous. I really right. do. And I'm, I'm not scared to admit that. Um, if you don't get nervous, and you don't care. If you're not nervous, you, you, you either don't care or you're just not normal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or you're too arrogant, and that's going to come back to bite you on the ass. Well, there at some you go. Point, isn't it? Um, so yeah, and it kind of think, no, do you know what? You got to do it now. All these people are coming here to watch you do something. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. a lot of these people come to Bristol and that as well. It's not like they're coming there and they're getting to see Anthony Joshua on their main event or Tyson Fury. You know. They come there to watch me yeah. and it's just like, right, let's put on a show. And then as soon as you get in that ring and that bell goes, the nerves go and it's it's time to go to work. Amazing. What is your ring music, by the way? I have Chelsea Dagger. Oh. I think that was, I think they had that at, um, at the wrestling show. We, yes. Great, that really great gets... to get everyone up on their feet. I was got to my last fight in Swindon. I have just like loads of CDs in my bag and which I've had of like ring music over the years. Yeah. And I, I mean, this must have been someone else's uh, fight because I never had it. It was, is it like it, <laughs> Lethal Bizzle, pal? And uh, they started playing that and I was just like, I'm like, I ran, literally ran to the ring. I was so embarrassed. It was a crap song. <laughs> <laughs> ran to the ring. This isn't me. I sometimes think about like if I was a wrestler, okay, go on. what my entrance theme would be because they're so important. I'm looking forward to this. They're so important. Well, I don't know what it would be, but I know it, it would be some like That's good, super you know slow, sludgy... In like the next over the weekend, I'm gonna find a song that you, I think would suit you. I'm gonna get a little picture of you, and I'm gonna play it on my Instagram story. It's gonna be you walking to my entrance music. That's it. I'm gonna pick one for you. Okay. Sick. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's amazing what you do. It's amazing the, the the you know productivity is. You know, this is you're you're in Swindon. You're sparring. You're off to Kazakhstan to yeah. to fight the European thing. And why Kazakhstan? That's not in Europe, is it? We just we just got the phone call. Uh, is yeah, it in Europe? is it in Europe? I guess so, isn't it? I think so. I'm not sure. Harry, I'm not sure. We'll well, I don't yeah. know. It doesn't. I just feel like quick. it's not in Europe. But if but it, I feel is, like it is, I'm sorry. Maybe, maybe it's not. I don't know. Yeah. We have to go down to. We've got a bit of a crazy week. We got to go to. So we found out last Friday. We accepted the fight on the Saturday. Oh, how does that go down? Tell me how that goes down. You're doing whatever, making a pot noodle. Well, not like you need pot noodle. <laughs> you're, you know what I mean? you're, doing, you're at home, you're doing whatever, right? You're well, not expecting the, we're just phone. starting training, so it's a good time to get the call. Okay, so the call comes... Who who rings who? Your manager? So they're... They're, they're people. It was there, yeah, it's, just like, it's done every sort of organisation. So it was through the that MTK Global. Um, you've heard of them. They're quite a big promoter in boxing, and I'm sure people listening would have would have heard of them. I did no research. They uh, they they had a they they got guys all over all over the world, and they're like the guy from England. Oh, you've got uh, round wheeler, blah blah. Would even fight such and such. Um, so this way, this is how much it's going to be for. Blah, blah, blah. Do you want to come out? It's in Kazakhstan. So we sort of had a foot, looked at the weight, and I sort of jumped on the scales, and I was um and around a little bit. Um, I was originally supposed to be fighting in Froome on December the twelfth. This fight was on December 11th, so it's not like you can't do that in Kazakhstan, come back the next day and fight again, you know. In well, there'd boxing, be a really good PR opportunity. You have to actually have a, a week, a week in between with boxing. Unless you get cut or knocked out, you have to have 28 days right. in between. Again, this is what I was saying earlier about how it's Very a bit safer sensible. these days, you know. Yeah. Um, you have to, so if you get knocked out or cut, you, you have to have 28 days off, see the doctor um, before you get back in the ring. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so the Froome show is now off to obviously take this fight because it's obviously such a big opportunity for me. Um, if I win that title, you know, my, my next fight after that is bigger again, you know. Yeah. Maybe I will eventually be at that Wembley Stadium, maybe, I don't know. Well, if you get that title... Here we go. What? Ha oh. It's almost dangerous to think about it too much, isn't I'll it? I'll have a fancy chain to go out wear on my neck like you have, then. There it is. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, how do you, do you visualise success? I don't, I don't think. You I, don't put too I, much on... I think about it, yeah. but I don't... Because that could become a distraction, couldn't it? If you, it could go two ways. I imagine it could go, 
so distracting that you think about how how your life would change and how it would be and and everything and and that could completely um cloud you a little yeah. bit or it could go the other way where it's like you know it's, it puts it lights a fire under your ass and makes yeah, you yeah. more Re- yeah yeah so which or do you just go i'm not I thinking about that it, i just no, can't like, think about that until the, the moment the only thing that ever runs through my head when i when i'm when I, any fight i just think don't really like look to my, my looking at my opponent too much i have a quick little look just yeah. see what their style and like, i've watched one fight of this guy See what their styles like. See what stance they are. If they're left-handed or right-handed and stuff, it makes a bit of a difference in boxing. I don't know if you know that. Yeah. yeah. No. I, imagine South if I was stops. doing a boxing match, I would have all the YouTube clips of that yeah. person, and I just watch everything they yeah, do. Yeah. Okay. So it makes me a bit nervous. I don't like it. I, you don't you know, like doing that. Get, I get shaky and a bit like I just I don't know. I just, okay. Uh, I just like to have a little look. You know, watch maybe one fight. Yeah. And I just go and I, I kind of say to myself every morning when I wake up. We all wake up sometimes, no matter what level of boxing you wake up, and you think tired in the morning I drink it. get out of bed you lazy right? yeah and uh, you can just work hard do what you want. okay yeah and just work hard because at the end of the day if your opponent's out there doing it at the end of the night he's going to be better than you yeah if you're you know you need to train harder than what he does but sensibly you know you don't want to obviously kill, you know every every session kill yourself yeah you need to just train train hard but change sensible and um, just out, outwork your opponent. That's, 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 that's simply that. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. that if you're led in bed, you, in your like, you know, it, what's really dangerous is if you start scrolling, isn't it? Yeah. I find that like today, I had a lie in for the first time in ages, and I started scrolling on my phone. And the next thing I knew, it was midday. I was like, yeah, Jesus yeah, yeah, Christ! Yeah. And then I'm annoyed at myself. There there. So do you get that thing? So you think, oh, he's probably up. He's probably eating twenty raw That's eggs and punching a punching a rock face somewhere. <laughs> Literally that. If you, if you feel like that, you're not going to go wrong, you know. Right. If you get to the or two days before the fight and you think, "Oh shit, I probably should have done that run where I didn't do. I should have went to the gym that night. I didn't go." Right. You're going to go in that that into that ring thinking he probably deserves to win. Do you know what I mean? When I get in that ring, I get in that ring and I know myself. I've done everything yeah. I can. That if I don't win this fight, I've been I've lost to a better person. So yeah. I had one loss in my professional career. Very good guy from over in Spain. He flew over when I boxed him for him. Um, very very good opponent, and I, I had nothing bad to say about it. You know, he'd right. done exactly what he'd done from the, from the first bell. He ran across the, the ring, and he just went attack attack attack. And uh, yeah, he was a great fighter. Um, he's still undefeated now. Um, I wish him well. Um, but I still you know I lost that life thing in. I couldn't have done anything any different, you know. Right. I got the weight down. I, I felt fit. I felt strong. Sparring was going okay up until the fight. You know, nothing, nothing wrong whatsoever. Yeah. Um, the, the funny thing about boxing is, I could have maybe boxed him the week before or a week after, and, and it could one. have been a different result. Right. But obviously, it's not like a game of football. And there's eleven men on the pitch, and one person can have a bad day, and you might not know about it. They just sort of get the ball and pass it away in boxing. If one person has a bad day on boxing, you know, the other person can have a better day. You know. Um, I spar some guys here. Some days I, all over them. Some days I might have a bad day and I might get stu- caught with stupid shots. You know, yeah. the guy who I sparred yesterday was sparring again on Wednesday. It could be different on Wednesday. Yeah, I could have another black eye. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So if you had to go against that guy from Spain again, yeah, would the fact that he was so good, yeah, and would it be fair to say he dominated you? Do you know what? I, because you so, said he just ran at you yeah, and stuff. So the first round, he came flying across. And yeah. I, I got behind my jab, flicking out some shots in the first round. I, I felt okay. And then, I, it's, it's quite funny. So a, a fight, I boxed a Mexican a few fights ago. Very, very tough, strong Mexican. And he knocked me down. He knocked me down. I got up. The whole room was, was spinning. Was it a face shot? A yeah, yeah, head right. shot. I got up. The whole room was spinning. There was two referees in the ring. I didn't know which corner to go back to. Luckily, the bell went. Right. I went back to the ring. I didn't know where I was. What was I managed to recover and right. down to my fitness. Um, my recovery rate, uh, recovery rate is is pretty good. So what's happened? It started to so that crash round, that train of thought. Sorry. What happens there? So is it to do with when you say with your fitness? What's happening in the, in your body there? Is it just? I think it's just like blood flow. Able to, yeah, able and, to recover, slow the heart rate down. Right. Back, pull myself together a little bit. Had some water. Yeah. Right. Okay. I went on to the eighth round. I just outbox him again. The eighth round. Went on to win the fight. Um, with this guy, I got up. My head was completely fine. I was, I was like, I thought it slipped over. I was like, I said, ref, I'm fine. I think I've slipped. He's counted me, so I've got to take the count. It's fine. Right. First round finishes. Come out, fuck out for the second round. He comes flying across the ring again. Again, I'm back on my jab, feeling fine. 
catches me again, sort of, I sort of lean back on the ropes, the back of the head, more of the side of the head. So what, back around the ear? Yeah, around the is ear. That, is that something that can, if you get hit around the ear? Yes, yeah, yeah, just the, behind the ear there. Right, can that rock I've gone you? down again, Yeah. again, but everything completely fine. I'm looking at the referee, I said, ref, ref, I'm fine. He's like, Ryan, look down and my legs are just all crooked. I go, <laughs> my, my body had no control over itself anymore. I looked down and I was like, it was, it was crazy because my head was fine. I was, I was like, what's going on? I couldn't understand what was going on with my body and my legs just didn't work anymore. Is that scary? Because all of a sudden, um, control is gone from you then, isn't it? You think you're in yeah, control, Yeah, I mean, the adrenaline kind of... Thinking about it now, thinking, no, actually, it's quite scary when you say it like that. Yeah. But at the time, you're just like... You, obviously, you're gutted, you're upset, you know, you're trying to survive for this. It was my first loss as a professional. Um, yeah, I, I was gutted in front of my home crowd, you know. Yeah. And sort of 400 people there support me down at the Shoes and Grain. It was crazy, but... Um, yeah, I can't even remember what my thoughts were that day. I, you know, maybe felt like I let people down. You know, people have spent sort of 60, 60 pounds on tickets to come and watch me. Yeah, and that's it's, it's over in two rounds. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, mean, I, I know no one thinks like that. You know, when you speak to them afterwards, I was like, don't worry. You know, we, we come for a, a fight, and the guy was good. You can't help that. But you, know, you I guess you just think of the, the bad things, really. Yeah, I guess it, I guess you feel a response. Of, it's a lot of weight on shoulders, isn't it? It is. Um, ex, you know, people's expectations that may not even exist, but you kind of. You create that. And, you... and, and again, this is probably why the training is quite easy for me because I, I do have a lot. You know, I'm, I'm the only professional boxer in the room. I have all of these guys, you know. When I come, like, when I come here on a Thursday night and they say, oh, Ryan, do you need some sparring? I think, got to be good. You know what I mean? Because yeah. if, if I'm rubbish, well, they're not going to listen to what I say anymore. Yeah. So there is a lot of pressure, but it's, um, it's all part of it, I guess. And I don't know. I, I believe in my ability. I, you know, I wouldn't be here still boxing if I wasn't good. I wouldn't be, you know, 18 fights with only one loss. And one draw if, if if I was no good, but um, yeah, it's it's what it is. And that's another thing as well as as, as you as you progress through your career, you know, you can you can if you're having a moment, you know, we all have moments of like imposter syndrome or something where you think, God, am I the right one to be doing this? Or yeah, yeah. Am I good enough or something? We all get those in everything that, that we do. But the more you've <laughs> progressed through your career and you have those stats. That you can sort of just remind yourself, like, now I've got X amount of wins. Yeah, yeah. And that, I guess, well, probably makes things easier. But the funny thing is, I can't sing, I can't dance, so I've got to do boxing, really. There's nothing else I can do. So <laughs> it's the kind of the end, or end all for me. But um, I did recently, 2019, so after my loss, I thought I needed a little bit of time away. Had quite a lot of bad news that year. I was supposed to fight for the British title fight. It fell through. Southern area for the title fight twice. They both fell through. And I was kind of getting to the point that I've done this now since 2000. And, 2006, my first amateur boxing fight. Yeah. And I've not really, I mean, I've been to the national finals, I won Midlands titles when I lived in Leicester, won Southern area titles, um, got ranked, uh, ranked sec second in Britain, obviously reaching the finals for my weight category. Um, but, and then to think, well, you know, as a professional, nothing was really happening. I'm fighting in Bristol quite a lot and swimming quite a lot. Yes, I'm getting a good crowd. It's making the gym busy here, but yeah. I just thought you're spinning your wheels a bit. You know, did you I want to be, yeah, I want to be on. I want to be on TV. I want to be on an Anthony Joshua undercard. I want to be on a a big title fight, you know. Yeah. Um, and it just didn't seem to be happening. So it was getting to the point where I thought I had the loss. I've had a crap year with it, and then I started doing triathlon. I'd done my, my first triathlon at, uh, at Froom Froom Triathlon, and I just thought, wow, this is like the buzz back. You know, this is what I've been missing. But then that being said, maybe I was just missing because I wasn't boxing of something to replace it. Um, but I, I'd done the triathlon, I absolutely loved it. And then I found, there was another one, I think two weeks later in Midsummer Norton, I'd done that one. And there was another one a week later in the Cotswolds, I'd done that one. And then the, I went to do a Mallorca, I'd done one in Mallorca. And then lockdown happened and it was just like, oh right, now what do I do? So uh, kind of that all comes to a hold. Boxing comes to a hold. Um, I think I'd done what everyone done in the start of lockdown. I, I drank a little bit, I ate way too much. And um, yeah, then was, after lockdown finished, I got back into the boxing gym. I was like, no, I really need to do this again. I really need to go for it. Um, and I have obviously had my first fight back after two years out in September. Got the win. And then now this big opportunity has finally come. So uh, we're going to give boxing a little, little longer and, and go from now. I'm 28 now. See what happens when, when I'm 30. Yeah. And uh, I can always pursue triathlon afterwards, you know. 28? 28, just 28. I thought, you, I thought you were younger than that. Yeah, well, I get that a lot. It's the baby face. <laughs> Okay, well, yeah. What's the diet for this? What, so tell me. So now, so you've got. So we were talking about the call. So they, they ring your manager. Will yep. he? Will he do this? Does your manager then ring your trainer, 
And so but what I'm, do you think My about manager it? is actually my trainer as well. Okay. So it's, it's not always the case, but for my case it is. And he asks you, do you want to do this? Yeah. Or does he go, yeah, he'll be there. <laughs> no, he, he, my manager's good, but he's a good, right. friend, a good friend of mine as well, actually. Okay. Um, and we, we've got a quite a good, he's, he's very open with me, whereas other managers I've had, I'm not going to get go in and point the finger, but haven't been so open. Right. And sort of told, not told me about other opportunities, what could have come my way, which there's been other opportunities before, which are probably were a little bit too much for me, but I feel like they should have still been mentioned to me just to say, look, we've been offered this. Right. I feel like it's a little bit, you're not quite ready for that yet. Maybe you should think, but think about it. So you felt like they were sort of unnecessarily protecting you. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's, that's, that feels At the end of the day, it's my career. It's yeah. me getting punched in the face. And you're paying them. them. Exactly, right. yeah. Um, whereas my manager, he'll, any phone call he gets, he'll tell me and he'll be honest with me. He reckons it's a little bit too much to take on. Maybe, you know, this is my advice, but, you know, you do what you want to do. Yeah. And exactly what we've done with this fight. He said, this is what it is. Let's get you weighed. With this fight, he did sort of convince me to go for it a little bit more. He said, come on, like, you could, I believe in you for this and stuff like that. It's nice to have that, you know, he's someone yeah. else who believes in you. Um, the money's obviously a bit better for this fight. It's still nothing. I'm not going to be driving around any Ferraris anytime soon, but uh, it's still nothing crazy. Well, you wait until you get a belt. It might, change, they, they it might change. change. There you go, there you go. You maybe rent yeah. a Ferrari then. <laughs> for a bit. Um, so yeah, he's, he's very open with me. He just phones you out, so like, this is what weight is, this is what the purse is. Um, what do you want to do? And then just go from there, and then that's it. He passes on the, yeah, I'm going to do it. Um, then we just sort out flights and hotels and when we've got to get there and with this one being in Kazakhstan, we've got to go to the uh, the embassy on Wednesday down in London to apply for visas and stuff like that. Um, so there's a bit of a, there's a bit of a bull ache this next fight. But, um, but you're going to Kazakhstan? Know. We're going to Kazakhstan where it's minus 11, so I can not look no. at it. No! Yeah. No way! Minus 11. Are you doing any, oh. I... So it's going to be like a Rocky Four montage and yeah. the train <laughs> in the snow, I think. <laughs> the snow. <laughs> Trees in half. Um, minus 11, okay. So that's that. Sometimes when we do, when I watch stuff like football, World Cups, or whatever they wherever they are in the world that that time, um, and you look at their weather and their humidity and things yeah, like yeah. that, and you think, God, are like are the British boys able to cope with that humidity? You know, yeah, yeah. in like Barcelona or whoever, like the 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 countries that they train all year round in tropical weather and hot weather, like they're going to be way more acclimatized and stuff like that. Is this minus eleven Kazakhstan? Um, weather going to have any bearing on performance at all? Do you know what? I, I obviously thought about it. I honestly can't, can't don't know tell until you what, you're there. Yeah, I've, I've not experienced minus 11, I don't think. So, yeah, yeah. I, don't know. I couldn't imagine it. <laughs> what does it feel I like? I do not like the cold, so I can't imagine I'm going to enjoy it. Right. So you're going to have to be in that venue for a good few hours and stay wrapped up and everything, aren't you? And don't yeah. like the... the... I, don't, I don't think I'm going to get... I've got no winter clothes whatsoever, so I'm going to have to go and buy like a ski jacket or something. <laughs> whoever over there. I've got a 4XL <laughs> car <laughs> you, can, you can borrow. That'll, um, that'll, uh, that'll do, yeah. So, um, okay, so you're in this... What, what's this weight class again? Oh, super featherweight. Super featherweight. Yeah. What are the weight classes? Do you know what? I'm, I'm going to start at featherweight because that's what I know. So featherweight, which is nine stone to nine stone four. Uh-huh. And nine stone four. Sorry, no, it's not. Sorry, super fe featherweight is un it's maybe like eight stone ten to nine. Who's stone. eight stone? To I actually boxed up featherweight in two thousand eighteen, but to the point where someone came up to me and said to me, "Do you do crack?" <laughs> 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 I like, did never want to be this way again. <laughs> um, so, wow! Yeah, I weighed in at eight stone thirteen on on that fight, and that was the the Mexican, the guy who knocked me down. I thought I'm this, I'm too tall for this weight. It's ridiculous, you know. Um, so, <laughs> right, I'm just wondering if you could help me up with some crack. <laughs> Unfortunately, not, mate. Really oh, crack. sorry. No, forget I said anything. <laughs> Um, I was trying to keep this PG <laughs> for the kids. Damn um, it! <laughs> and I, uh, yeah, and I didn't perform too good at that weight, which is really start training because the training was brilliant for that fight. Um, I got on the ring, I just I fell apart. Really, my legs didn't want to work. My just my, my punching power was gone. Right. Um, so I thought I was looking at super featherweight, which is up to nine stone four, which isn't a massive difference. Right. And then I've lost that fight at uh, super featherweight, and I kind of thought. Maybe even that's too much now. And when I did have a little bit of time off and I was doing the draft line, I was just kind of eating what I wanted. I, I still, you know, I like to keep fit, so it's still like, it wasn't always bad stuff. I mean, I do like my food, I'm not going to lie. But, um, yeah, I, I was trying to stay fit and healthy, but just kind of eating plenty of it. Yeah. And I started realising then I would 
get home from a training session and when I'm losing weight, maybe I wake up next day and my back's a bit sore, my legs are a bit achy. Um, and I, sometimes I didn't want to train, didn't really have the motivation to train because I was so hungry or just so achy. And when I realized I was eating what my body needed to, to recover, I thought, this is easy. I can train every day and kind of eat what I want. And so I thought, maybe I'm not going to drop down the weight again. Um, obviously, got the phone call about dropping back down to super featherweight. It was the perfect fight. So I thought, Do you know what, we'll see what happens. And obviously, last week, I went from weighing 10 stone 6 to 9 stone 10 in five days. I thought, I'm only six pounds away in three weeks. Like, it's easily done. I go for it. Okay. And would you ever consider going up a weight class? Where do you go from there? What are the what? so my last my last fight was actually <laughs> my last fight was a bit funny. So we there's a bit of a struggle all over the UK for opponents at the moment because because of COVID and stuff like that. All of a sudden, sort of September, all of these boxing shows were happening all over the country. Yeah, um, everyone's been dying to get their boxers back out fighting. Um, obviously, I know professional boxing stock was still happening on TV. Yeah, but there's a hell of a lot more boxers than what you just see on TV fighting at these small sh- uh, small hall shows. Yeah. So everyone's itching to get out boxing. All of these promoters are organising shows. I think there was one weekend where there was like 48 boxing shows across the UK. Yeah. Obviously, we've only got limited professional... Re- you can't not, you know, don't just say, oh, jump in, do, refer- do be a referee. You have to be like a qualified referee and whatnot um, in, in officials and everything else. Um, so they were struggling with that. And also, we were phoning people up like, Oh, do you want to fight Ryan on such and such? And they're like, oh, sorry, I can't. I'm fighting the next day. I'm fighting the day before. I'm fighting the weekend before. Um, it was really struggling to get opponents. So on my last fight, we managed to find someone. But the guy was actually two weights above me. Right. Um, to my, my, my weight, what it was at the time. Um, he said, I think it was like 11 stone 10 or something like that at the start. And I was weighing like 10 stone 6. And they basically they made an agreement. Said, right, if you can get as close as you can to 11 stone, and we'll tell Ryan to do the same. So I weighed in at, so he weighed in first and he was 11 stone five. And I thought I was only 10 stone six this morning, like no idea. So I got a big two litre bottle of water, got the big bottle of water inside himself. <laughs> Think jumped on this girl, was absolutely dying to go for a pee. Is that allowed? And I thought, well, it's, it's probably <laughs> bending a few rules somewhere. Right. <laughs> but come on, I've done all this training. I'm not going to not fight now. Whatever it takes. So I got on me. this girl and I was 10 stone 10. He, no, sorry. Yeah, it's 10 stone 10 and he was 11 stone five. Um, so it's like, what, it's like nine pounds heavier. Right. Yeah. And they were a little bit, uh, I think nine pounds is like the a- absolute maximum right. that they would let a fight still go ahead. Does nine pounds make a huge difference? Does it make a big difference? Well, the thing is, he'd also lost weight. The, the weigh-in was the day before the fight. Right. So this is quite funny. So uh, the guy after the fight, he said, I got to ask you a question. What did you weigh this morning? Yeah. And I went, as soon as, literally, on, on, the, on the scale, you stood on the scales in your pants. I didn't even put my pants. I ran. Ran to the toilet, went for a pee. I was dying for a pee after drinking all that water. Yeah. And then I woke up the next day. I didn't really eat much. I was just so full up. I was bloated on water. Um, just kind of snacked a little bit the next day. I was 10 stone 6 next day, so I lost 4 pounds. He said to me, so what did you weigh this morning? I said, mate, you don't want to know. He was like, well, you were 10 stone 10 yesterday. You must have been at least 11 stone. I said, mate, I was 10 stone 6. Said, How did you lose weight? I said, because I was obviously on the maximum on the scales. I didn't obviously want to get into the ring full of water. Right. He said, God, I was 12 stone this morning. <laughs> <laughs> There's not like another way in on the day of the fight, you know. So. Right. Interesting. So, so because I think like I think about stuff like you know, <clears throat> I'm twenty <laughs> twenty something stone. Yep. You are what are you now? Uh, what is it now? Uh, nine stone ten. Nine, nine ten. If I knew what I was doing, boxing wise, and you know. Can you still can you still win? Is it how much of it is about technique? When it, when and it, points when it comes and... to you know, if I if I box someone else at my own ability who is ten stone heavier than me, they're gonna definitely you you know if they have similar ability, they're gonna definitely win. Right. Because you you build that punch resistance for one. I mean, if I punch you now, you're not used to it. You're gonna like turn away from it and stuff like that a little bit. Yeah. When you kind of get used to it, you don't turn away. You just kind of soak it up, absorb the punches. Um, but if you've got the ability to obviously outbox me as well, as be that much heavier, you're always the heavier person's always going to win. Right. Always. But then that that being said, it kind of depends. That's a massive difference, you know. Ten obviously between me and you, ten stone. Yeah, if, if that's the case. Did you say how much did you say you win? Sorry, twenty. Uh, sorry. You really? I okay. don't know what it is. Okay. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've just weight shamed you on camera now. So now no, how did you weigh? No, no, I'm <laughs> I am what I am. <laughs> um, but then that being said. Recently, 
I know you said you don't know much about boxing, but the ones who do know about boxing, Anthony Joshua boxed a guy called Usyk and lost. Right. Usyk come up from the weight from from cruiserweight up to heavyweight. Every you know, one of my friends at the gym is like, nah, it's all about weight and boxing. He's never going to do it. And he, he beat Anthony Joshua completely outboxed him. Um, so maybe at the higher end of the weight divisions, it doesn't matter so much. But you know, someone who's you know. 20 stone is going to be a lot stronger than some of these 10 stone. But then that being said, the 10 stone person could whip around that ring and they might not catch them. But Yeah, it's it's like uh, a bit... When, like... they, when, they, when they do, though, they're definitely going to know about it with 10 stone difference, definitely. Right, okay, interesting. So I'm the same height as Tyson Fury. <laughs> what is... Let's get it on. Set what's it his... Um... <laughs> Call him out on YouTube, that's what everyone else does. Coming for you, Tyson. <laughs> um, Goliath versus Goliath. <laughs> um... <laughs> What's his advantage? Why is he so dominant and so good at the moment? Is it because he's got he's got the reach? What's I mean? I really don't Do you know, know much think, about I the mechanics Tyson of boxing. Tyson Fury is the best thing about he's fearless. And I really honestly think that's right. it. You know, he's come back from what he come back from his depression and things like that, and he's just chucked himself in. He's he's boxed the the scariest man on the planet and just made him look silly. You know, but you know, about three times, it's just. All these other boxers look a bit worried. Oh, what about if he hits me with that big right hand he's got? Yeah. And he's just not, I don't know. I mean, he's obviously tough and he's strong and he's, um, you know, but he's just, some of these boxers, like Anthony Josh, for example, he's almost a little bit scared, which you can understand. I wouldn't want a 20 man, uh, 20 stone man to punch me in the face. It's going to hurt. I'll be all right then. But Tyson Fury just doesn't, <laughs> 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 but uh, Tyson Fury, he just doesn't seem to care at all. Like, I don't know. He just puts it all on the line. And I, I, I don't think he's scared of losing. I honestly don't think he is. Uh, and, well. Okay, so it's mental agility, mental yeah. toughness yeah, yeah, over. I mean, he's a good. He's good on his feet for a big guy. He's good on his feet. He's you know he's, he's tall. He's he's awkward to hit. But yeah, I just I think it's, it's a lot of it is mental mental toughness. He, he's not afraid to put it all on the line. Okay, okay, interesting. Yeah, I just yeah. There's so much. There's it, like everything in, in life. <laughs> all these things you get into. There's so much to it. I did like a, a night of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Okay, yeah. and. It's amazing how deep that goes as well in different in different ways. In the boxing, must be the same thing. You know, you've got different weight gloves. You've got this. You like that. It's all. There's so many layers to every every um, aspect of of life and every sport. How how did what was your, what would your um, advice be to someone who is getting into it? You know, because you can get people with like all the gear, no idea. Yeah. Where do you? Where do I? If I want to do you know, want to be Mr. Tyson Fury here and through him. Where do I start? Well, the, the, the funny thing is a lot of people come in, so I, I teach a lot of people from all over, like, you know, marathon runners come and do a little bit of boxing for better fitness, triathletes, stuff like that. And some of these people are like, the fittest guys I know. You get a pair of boxing gloves. It's like anything you do. Like, so I, I, I'd class myself as a very fit person when it comes to running and things like that. When I get in that swimming pool, not so bad anymore, I put a bit, bit of practice in. But I used to do two lengths and there's, Bubbles coming out both ends, you know. Absolutely <laughs> kill me, it really did. Um, but it's just because I didn't relax, and that's what people do. They come in, they right. hold their breath, they squeeze as tight as they can, and they just go for it. And 10, 20 seconds later, you know, I've had big 15, 16, 17, 18 stone blokes coming in. Think, oh, yeah, I'll spar him, he's only little. And then, like, like Lee, for example, Lee's not that big, but he's you know an older bloke thinking he was going to bash me around the ring. He doesn't relax, and I'm just nice and relaxed. and. I'm still whipping around the ring and he's absolutely knackered, you know? Right. Um, it's just learning to just relax, take your time. Obviously, nothing happens overnight. It's, you know, practice slow, learn fast, as, as simply as that. Right. What was that again? Pract practice slow, learn fast. You can, you can have that one for free. Practice yeah. slow. Practice slow, learn fast. Okay. There's an SAS thing, which is slow is fast, fast is smooth. Okay, okay. So you, okay. you can have can that. I that one, can I? You okay. can have that one. <laughs> Is that when you was in the SAS? Yeah, that's that was your from SAS my days. time in the SAS. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't talk about it that often. But, um, but yeah, uh, actually, I was talking to someone the other day, right? And they say the SAS is the biggest regiment in the world because everyone claims to have been in it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to a guy the other day. I won't, I won't name him, but um, in, all right, and he's talking about the, the, the army and he's getting things all wrong. And I'm like, okay. And I was like, oh, I didn't know you were in the army. I said, um, what regiment were you? And he went, SAS. <laughs> <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> I 
Fuck off, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, nah, you weren't. Conversation was dead at that point. I was like, okay, cool. Now you're it's wasting my time. Now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're I, it, everyone I've met, you know, their, their, their granddad was always a boxer in the army or something like that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, my granddad a boxer in the army. Okay, yeah, okay. My granddad was Lenny McLean. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about the. the um, this 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 uh this end on on <coughs> your new mission obviously your your mission is to get to Kazakhstan dominate your opponent and come back with that shiny shiny belt yes which i want to touch and hold <laughs> um when you do um but this this ring we're sat in here it, this can't stay here now this has oh, to find man. a new home um tell me about this what what's the what, what's the situation here so Last Wednesday, I was chatting to the owner of the gym, a good friend of mine. Um, he said, unfortunately, the landlord has increased the rent in right. of the building, um, doubled the rent, in fact. From what I'm gathering, the landlord is trying to get some planning permission to build and change the premises around a little bit, maybe build some houses out the front. So kind of wants them out so we can make this something else. Right. Um, so after the gym's been here for 20 years, they've been forced to close their doors because it's just the, the, the increase in rent and stuff like that, um, meaning we're going to have to move where we are. Um, so at the moment, we're looking for a new venue in Froome, um, a new spot to take our boxing sessions, not just me for my training, but for the kids, for you know the adults who come along, um, for the health and fitness of Froome, basically. Yeah. And we were talking about this a little bit yesterday yeah. or the day before. Was it yesterday? No, the day, it doesn't matter. I've been punching and standing down. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you were telling me about the numbers of of, of kids that, that come here. I was astounded by just how many how many kids are involved here. Yeah, what so I, I have in my group classes, two, two group classes a week on a Thursday, one at five o'clock, one at six o'clock. And I've got, I think I've got 56 members. And the only reason I haven't got 200 members because I just haven't got the room here. That's literally the only reason. Right. And my own time at the moment, I haven't got the room, my training for my fight and stuff like that. I haven't got time to take them on. Um, but yeah, there's there's a massive wait in And you know, I know I'm good at what, what, I, what I do when it comes to teaching the classes. Um, they enjoy it. It's fun. I mean, who doesn't like punching stuff? Um, and it's, you know, it's a great energy release for them. It keeps them fit. It keeps them happy. And, you know, it's exciting. And boxing's good. Uh, so this is when this is when this is gone. If you do not find a, a venue for this fast, what is what what are the implications going to be of this? Oh, and obviously, there's a financial implication to you because this is part of your yeah. This obviously livelihood. work full time. I mean, you know, I, I can I can get another job there. That's, that's fine. But you know, I, I do this because I love it. I don't do this just because it is is this job. Well, you don't want to go and do another do job, do you? No, you I, don't. Do I this? definitely I love this. You know, yeah. you know, I, I, the way I see it, I, I hang around in the gym with my friends. We have a laugh. We do some boxing together. We we punch each other sometimes, and uh, the, like I said earlier on in the podcast, the the kids when as they grow up, you know, like young Frankie, little Charlie, you look back and you think, wow. So I put something on Facebook, and all the parents were sending photos of their their kids wearing boxing gloves and things like that. Comment, and I was just like, I don't even recognise some of the kids because to me it doesn't seem that long ago. I mean, done it for seven years ago, but now, but you know, seven years ago, a kid was seven years old. He's now fourteen. It's in, it's insane. You know, it's a massive different uh, difference in their life. Yeah, and you can see how it's just matured them as people. Um, boxing, um, it's very like very disciplined. Um, and it's kept them fit, kept them healthy. Lots of them have lost weight. You know, lots of them now want to be personal trainers. Some of them want to be boxers. Some of them are now, you know, playing higher levels of football and things like that because their fitness has improved so much. So yeah, it's great. It's good to see. And this is this is like we we, we can't underestimate how powerful boxing is for channeling those. Um, that energy and that anger and things that, that that people have when they're growing up, when they're going through the changes and things like that, and things, hormonal things are happening. Boxing is so powerful. In the school I work in, I'm not going to go into too many details or names and stuff. But we have a student there that when he gets agitated or is overwhelmed, one of the first things we do is go, "Do you want to go boxing?" And we go somewhere with him, we get some pads out, and he's he's quite sick actually, and he gets on those pads and he just zones yeah, straight yeah, into the it. Focus, do you know what I mean? Obviously there's that stress relief of boxing, obviously you're, you're hitting, letting your anger out. Um, and, and the endorphins from it as well, afterwards after working out, you know, it's, it's, it's great. 
Yeah, that usually sorts them right out. So it's 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 not only that it's like, you know, oh, these kids aren't going to have someone to come and do something, you know, on a Thursday night or something. It's There's so much more to it, isn't there? There's so many um, aspects of of what you provide here. Yeah, you know, it really is like a family. It really is, you know, become a good friend. So every single every person who walks in this door, um, not not just because I give me money, but because we're just so close. We spend so much time together. Yes, I may only do one kid's class a night, but with other nights where the gym's open, I still see them here. Or you know, we do other events and, and, and they're there. We've done boxing events down at the Cheese and Grain and stuff before. Um, yeah, it's just it's going to be such a shame. But I'm going to try, keep trying my absolute hardest to to find somewhere. Hopefully, with this next fight. The sort of any sort of media attention, we can focus on that as well, um, and yeah, hopefully something will come forward. And do you have? Have you had any offers? I've had I've had two offers of places to come through, but need a hell of a lot of work. Um, so it's going to be costly to get it going. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had so many you know nice messages and people offering to do crowdfunding and things like that. Um, the biggest issue I didn't want to jump straight into crowdfunding without a place. I don't want you know. Right. I'm not, I, the last thing I want is people thinking, "Oh, you're just take, taking our money." You know, I'm sure people won't think like that, but me thinking that's how I'm feeling. You know, I don't want that. If if, if I get offered a place and I know how much it's going to cost, I'm going to put that statement out there. I'm going to say, "Well, this is what's going to cost. This is going to happen. This is how much money you need to raise." If we do this, it can be it, it can happen. Um, obviously, I don't want to just take something that, that that's not going into but everything I, I i take for that will be going into their boxing gym into their kids and their and their boxing training 100 percent. amazing and I, I i would hazard a guess that if you you know the parents of the kids and obviously you do stuff with adults as well but a lot of the love for this comes from the kids doesn't it and i imagine there's a lot of the parents of kids that have specific skills in certain areas yeah. and would be more than happy to get stuck in and yeah, do a bit of plastering or yeah, yeah, lay a yeah. bit of carpet or help yeah. you put the ring up and that's or, what it's all about and that's like we're not just it's not a boxing gym when you come and you do a session and you see you next week it's yeah. we really are a community we, we've brought everyone together you know the best thing about my kids' class, they come in, and one of the parents said this to me recently. It's not like Jack and Tom sit over there and Dave and Jack. It's, you know, everyone just comes in. They all sit together and they all chat to each other. They all help each other. If someone's doing something, they shouldn't like they help. You know, they help each other stick their ropes back up there. They help the taller ones help get the head guards down for the smaller ones. And it's it's nice to see. It really is. Mm. Um, and obviously, it'd be a shame. I had a message yesterday from one of the parents. Um, she let me share it openly on my Facebook. Um, just saying how much it's helped her son who was near getting excluded from school and now his behavior has changed at home it's changed changed at school um and if i can have that influence on people that's the reason i want to do it you know not not for any other reason mm. well i'm going to wish you the best of luck obviously we've got the the mayoral chains dangling there and i don't i don't want to say too much on here but you know i will i will try my best to, to help you and get stuck in and support <laughs> in this new mission uh, thank you uh, so I appreciate we won't it. be talking any business on the podcast but we will have continued conversations and keep me in the loop and anything I can do to help you I will do thank you very much <laughs> because it's very important for the community thank you and best of luck in Kazakhstan thank you we got well, three weeks three weeks Saturday I think no uh, sweat so yeah don't worry about it we got it we got this it's only three weeks there you go it's fine amazing thanks dude cheers